Hey, Dan here. So I've been running into a few circumstances where I need to test DC current, and it's either inconvenient to constantly have to break the circuit apart and put a meter in line, or putting that burden resistor from the meter uh, in the circuit is going to throw things off. So I figured it was time I went ahead and bought a clamp meter that would handle DC current. I did some shopping, and I settled on a, uh, a UNI-T brand. This is a UT-210E. Seemed like a decent little meter. It's gotten uh, fairly good reviews, and it was inexpensive. Uh, this cost me just under $40 there. But I went around and I looked online. I found a few guys reviewing this thing, but I couldn't find anyone tearing it apart. Well, I've got a new meter, so what should we do? Let's pull it apart. <laughs> so this is what we get for 40 bucks there. She comes in a, a decent little case. Small, unobtrusive. Uh, just what I want for a meter. Just something to keep it protected when you throw it in a pack. Or otherwise, uh, you know, set it away. Nothing huge and bulky. We get a couple of leads here. Uh, fairly decent. The leads themselves claim to be Cat 4 600 volt, Cat 3 1000 volt, but the wires themselves are not uh, marked with any ratings, so take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> They've got a a decent shroud around the pokey bits, uh, in case you're working on high voltage circuits there. You don't arc out to anything next to it. We've got our meter. A little testing certificate, which I cannot read. And our manuals. Not terrible, and there's not a heck of a lot that you need to go into the manual for anyways. Let me toss that away. And then we've got our meter here. It's a fairly small meter, but it does fit nicely in the hand. It does have a rubber overmold here. The red plastic surrounding the body of the meter and the knob here is all overmolded rubber. Doesn't feel bad at all. It's uh, not velvety and sticky. It's nothing that feels like it's going to break down. It feels like a decent uh, decent rubber. We've got regular plastic on the, the clamp there. And a pretty nice little display. It does have a backlight. Uh, from my messing around with this before, the backlight shuts off fairly quickly, which is alright. You're not going to drain your batteries out. It does take two triple A's. And as for our functions, we've got uh, AC and DC volts, we've got resistance, diode check, capacitance, and continuity. We have 220 and 100 amp uh, ranges for both AC and DC, and we have non-contact voltage. So one of the more interesting features I noticed was the non-contact voltage. It's not something I plan to use this for very often, uh, but it is actually linear. Which is the first time I've run into that on a meter before. Alright, so now the interesting bit. Let's go ahead and crack this thing open. Uh, let's see what she's made of. Okay, so to start with, we have a decent battery well here. It does have nice spring contacts instead of dangly little wires just tagged onto the board. Uh, the case does have a fairly good ridge here that slots into the other half of the shell. And then there is a matching half height ridge. So it's got decent blowout protection here. On the board itself, uh, it doesn't seem like we have any fuses on the input, but this doesn't have any current. Uh, Current measuring capability on the inputs. Does have a nice bit of protection otherwise, though. The barrel connectors are all right. Uh, they're not the best, but they're not bad at all. Uh, it is all molded into this plastic shell, so they're probably not going to fall apart too quickly. <laughs> we do have our board that's almost nothing but surface mount components here. A whole array of capacitors all running into that one main chip. We've got a number of trimmers. Instead of this being all software programmed. And here's the key. The current sensor, instead of being an inductive pickup, like an old AC clamp meter would be, this is a hall sensor. So there's going to be a hall effect sensor, a bias coil, and then there's also a green wire hanging off here, which looks to be the shield. And that's why we can measure DC current instead of just AC current using this meter. Alright, so let me get this opened a little bit further here, and we'll take a look at what's on the other side of the board. So 
So here we are on the other side of that board. We've got our LCD and frame here. We've got our membrane buttons. They're not bad for membrane buttons. They feel substantial. Dip that out. And over here we've got our one backlight LED, only from the one edge of the LCD. Uh, it does seem to be bright enough though, spreads without uh, any issue. We've got our slide contacts for the selector switch and our copper fingers there. Nothing looks to be gold plated, but the contacts don't look uh, questionable at all. They look like they'll hold up long enough. And there's not a heck of a lot else going on on this side of the board. We do have a decent amount of track separation here uh, between the one and the other pin. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> not a lot of separation between our negative pin, and if you're measuring AC circuits, well, that could be as live as the other half. But, we've got a decent, uh, decent case, decent input protection, so it's probably not going to be much of an issue, unless you're really concerned about working on very high voltage uh, equipment there. As for the rest of the board here, we also have... A little programming header, which is probably how they set this thing up from the factory. Uh, even though we do have the manual adjustment pots here. So it looks like it can be trimmed in you know, after the fact. You don't have to send it back to Unity for alignment. <laughs> uh, we've got our little buzzer and not a heck of a lot else here. So I'm going to go just a little bit further. I'm going to take the clamp off and see how far we can get into that. Okay, so it doesn't look like we're going to get any further into this clamp. Uh, unfortunately, the entire claw is glued shut. I don't feel like breaking a brand new meter. I want to get a little bit of use of, out of it before that. Uh, so unfortunately, we aren't going to be able to see uh, how the hall sensor is laid out, uh, what else is going on in here. But it shouldn't be anything too spectacular. Otherwise, I'm going to get this put back together. Uh, make sure it still works. <laughs> And we'll take a look at it after that. All right. Thank you. 
Okay, so she's back together, and better yet, I think it still works. <laughs> I just showed you the uh, continuity test there. It is a latching type. Uh, it's not as fast as I'd like it, but it is fairly responsive. Still very usable. As for the DC current here, switch that over to DC. We'll zero it. And clamp it on. Thirteen twenty three, thirteen twenty six. <laughs> That's within three milliamps. I'd say that's pretty darn close for not even having to pull the wire out. So I think I'm going to get plenty of use out of this meter. It's a tool I've wanted to have in my toolbox for a while. It's nice to finally have it and not to have to pay through the nose for it. <laughs> if you've got any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. And I'll see if uh, I can answer anything if you're interested. Otherwise, uh, I'll throw a link in the description over to Amazon where I purchased uh, my meter. And I'll see you on the next video. Later.